solving quadratic equations with leading coefficients greater than one. So these are the harder, these are the more difficult uh, quadratic equations to solve. Okay, but after this video, you should be experts. Okay, uh, well, here we go. Uh, <laughs> there are three types of methods uh, that it's in this video. You only need to do it one way. I will not ask you to do it all three ways. You go by the one you prefer. Uh, I'm going to start with by grouping. Uh, this technique is useful for other reasons. Okay, Lizzy method uh, is only good if you always remember to reduce fractions. Trial and error is good if you have a really good number sense. Okay, let's get started. Here we go. So here is my factoring by grouping situation. Uh, you will never actually see a problem that looks like this. This is very concocted, but I need to introduce this concept before I do the real factoring by grouping. All right. All right. So here, what I have here is four terms, and I'm going to group two of them together and the other two together. And we're going to look for a common factor. This was in the other video when you're looking for a common factor. So here, there's a common factor of 5x. Right, 5x goes into 5x squared and 5x goes into 30x, right? 30 divided by 5 is 6. Here, there's a common factor of 8. So an 8 will come out. So when I take the 5x out of this, it leaves just an x. When I take 5x out of 30x, and remember when I say take out, I'm actually dividing. So 30 divided by 5 is 6. When I take x divided by x, it's 1. So there's only a 6 left over. And here, I'm taking out a common factor of 8. 8x divided by 8 is just x. 48 divided by 8 is 6. Now, this should this is what should happen with our factoring by grouping. Notice there are two x plus 6s. So you can think of this x plus 6 itself as a common factor. So I'm going to take that x plus 6 out. I'm going to bring it up front. That's going to leave me 5x plus 8. All right, so this x plus 6 is common to both. And I'm going to pull it up front. Right? And you don't have to pull it out for it. You can put it in the back. It doesn't matter. The idea is you're taking it out. So when I take x plus 6 out of this combination right here, it just leaves the 5x. And when I take x plus 6 from this 8, it just leaves the 8. And that's it. That's the factoring by grouping. And we're going to do another example. Okay. All right. Uh, the example, the purpose of this example is to show you what to do when you have a negative here, when you have a minus sign here. Okay. So this part, the first part's normal. I'm going to take out a 7x. There's a 7 goes into 7, 7 goes into 42. Here, whenever this number is negative, and it doesn't matter whether this is negative or not, if this number is negative, we're going to take a negative out. Okay, so here, uh, we group those two together, group those two together, and here, the 7x comes out, leaving me x there, 7x from 42x, taking it out, 42 divided by 7 is 6. Now, this is the interesting part, and this is where people frequently make their mistakes. When I take that negative 8 out, this minus 48 becomes positive 6. And look, we have x plus 6 again in common. Okay, um, And if that doesn't happen, if you don't have x plus, if this part and this part are not the same, something has gone awry. Either you factored incorrectly or you mistook the problem for a factoring by grouping problem. Okay, uh, That does happen. Uh, not anytime soon, though. All right. So we take out the x plus 6, the common factor. It comes out, and you're left with 7x, and then the minus 8, and that's factored. All right, now, now so we're going to solve quadratic trinomial equations with leading coefficient greater than 1. Now, what does that have to do with this? And this is where it's going to happen. All right, so in the last video, you looked at this number up here. right? We, put, we would drag the 12 over here, and then we drag the 31 over down here. Now, the difference between here is... We have a leading coefficient, and we're actually going to take the 7 and 12 together and put it up top. We're going to do 7 times 12. So that's the biggest difference. So it's going to make the numbers much bigger. So we're going to take the 7 over there and the 12 over there and multiply them together. All right. Then we're going to take the 31 and drag it down there. All right. So we're looking at the factors of 84 that combine to make 31. The obvious guess is 7 and 12 because 7 times 12 gave us 84, so it's worth checking, is 7 plus 12, 31. Well, no, so try something else. 21 times 4, right? Uh, so 21 times 4 is 84. 21 plus 4 is 25, not 31. 
if you don't know how to decide what to guess, my suggestion is you swap some factors around. 21 is 7 times 3. Take the 3 out of this side, put it over here, and put the 4 back in with the 7. So it'll make it 28 times 3. So if you run out of ideas, that's one way to look at it. All right. So, so, I, so it becomes 28 times 3. You can double check. Is 28 times 3 84? You pull out the calculator and check it yourself. I know it is. All right. Now, is 28 plus 3 31? Sure is. All right. So that's going to be my combination. So this, and this is, this is the grouping part, or actually, this is leading to the grouping part. And what we're going to do is going to re, I want to point at it, but you can't see me pointing at it. So, uh, oh, use the laser pointer, dummy. All right. So, so this 31x, I can split it into 28x plus 3x, and it or really doesn't matter. Okay. But here, all I've done was taken the 31x and split it into 28x plus 3x. Now, I am creating a situation where I'm going to factor by grouping. Okay, so here I have a common factor of 7x, and here I have a common factor of 3. So if I take 7x out of 7x squared, it leaves me an x. Take a 7x out of 28x, leaves me 4. 28 divided by 7 is 4. Take a 3 out of 3x, and it leaves me x. Take a 3 out of 12, it gives me 4. 12 divided by 3 is 4. And look, I have x plus 4, x plus 4, common. That's my common factor again. Put, bring it up front. If I take x plus 4 out of this combination, it leaves me the 7x. If I take x plus 4 out of here, it leaves me the 3. And that's the factored form. But remember, we're not just factoring here. We're actually solving these equations. So remember the zero property of equality. We're going to set each of these equal to zero and then solve them separately. So if I solve this for x, I get negative 4. If I solve this for x, I'm going to get, so 3 is on the right, so it'll be negative 3 divided by 7, negative 3 sevenths. Okay. Now, by the way, if you skip this step on your test, quiz, classwork, whatever, I am perfectly fine with that. Ooh, that's a typo. That should be x equals negative 4. <sighs> How shameful. Anyways, I'm not going to fix it. All right. But it's x equals negative 4, not x minus 4. Mm. Bad. All right. Let's see what we got here. Okay. Now, up to this point, we had everything already on one side. So make sure you know how to bring everything to one side. Or that you have to bring everything over here. So this negative 4 to 2 is no good. You have to bring it to the left. Whenever you have an exponent uh, greater than 1, you need to have everything on one side so we can do the factoring thing. All right, so I'm going to move the negative 42 over. That makes it positive 42. Now I can start doing the factoring business. All right, so that means we've got to look at 21 and 42. So there's the 21. We're going to bring that over there. And the 42 bring it over here and multiply the two numbers together and we get 882. Uh, yeah. And the middle term is negative 67. Okay, so the obvious choice is 21 times 42. All right, now, instead of trying to figure out what number is going to 882, by the way, you're welcome to do that. I'm gonna break down 21 and 42, okay? So 21 and 42, 21 is three times seven, 42 is six times seven. And now look at what we got. What's 21 plus 42? It's what, 63. It's actually pretty close to 67. So maybe if we just, okay, what if we made this a little bit bigger? Well, we'll just go over. So here, remember 21 is three times seven, 42 is six times seven. So let's swap the six in the 42 and the seven in the 21, move them over. So that'd be six times three, 18 on the left and seven times seven, 49 on the right. So that's gonna be 18 and 49, right? Right, you can double check yourself. 18 times 49 is 882. I hope it is. <laughs> but what's 18 plus 49? Well, it's 67. But it's positive 67. Well, that's not good. We need a negative 67. To get positive 67 out of this, I'm sorry, to get negative 67 out of this, we need both of them to be negative, right? Why both of them? Well, if one of them were negative, then you end up subtracting, right? And if I had negative 18 plus 49, negative 18 plus 49 is not negative 67. It's like what? Uh, positive 31. Okay. Also, negative times positive does not give me a positive. So I need them to be both the same sign in order to get the positive 82. So we make them both negative. All right. So negative 18 plus negative 49 gives me negative 67. And negative 18 times negative 49 gives me a positive 882. Okay. Running out of breath. All right. So, so that means we're going to split the negative 67x into negative 18 and negative 49. There we go. So we have split the middle term into these two, okay? So we're forcing the situation where it's uh, factoring by grouping, 
So here, I'm going to take out a common factor. What's the common factor here? Uh, looks like 3x. So I'm going to take a 3x out of both of these. So that's going to give me 7x minus 6, I think. All right. And then here, there's a common factor of 7. But remember, I said earlier that if there is a factor by grouping, if there's a negative here, you're going to take a negative out, regardless of whether this is negative or not. But when I take a negative, I, or let's just take, see what the next step looks like. All right, so here. So I took a 3x out of here. 21 divided by 3 is 7. 18 divided by 3 is 6. So that's what that looks good. Taking a negative 7 out. So positive, negative 49 divided by negative 7 gives me positive 7. Positive 42 divided by negative 7 is negative 6. So make sure that sign changes. And one way to make sure it's happening is you can make sure that these are the same. So we've got 7 minus 6 in both places. Okay, all right, so that means a common factor of 7 minus 6, which we're going to take out. When that comes out, the 3x comes down and the minus 7 comes out, and that's our factored form. Okay, and we set each factor equal to 0 and solve them for x. You can do that on your own. All right, because this is already getting pretty long, and I have a lot of slides to go through, and I'm still remembering. All right, uh, if you understood that, there is no need to keep going unless you're just curious. Okay, the other techniques are just more techniques. You're not required to do all three techniques. You do whatever technique you like best. You can watch all three and decide, oh, I like this one and just go with it, all right? So you can either stop here or just watch to see what happens. Okay, now the, the next method we're gonna look at is called the Lizzie method. Uh, the story is that a student invented this method and is named after her. I posted the Lizzie method under another channel and just I had a person, oh, okay, I'm rambling. But anyway, I had a person claiming to be Lizzie post on my channel. That was kind of weird. I didn't, I didn't, I don't know if I believe it or not. But these are the same problems, okay? So you shouldn't expect anything different uh, in terms of the numbers. But let's see what it looks like. All right, so you, Lizzie method starts the same way. So you got to bring the 7 over here, bring the 12 over here, multiply them together, get 84, okay? And then we bring the 31 down there. All right, now... Well, I still, we're still doing the same thing. It's, well, the obvious choice was 7 times 12. It, it, 7 times 12 is 84. 7 plus 12 is not 31. So try something else. 21 and 4. Right? These are the same ones. I was too lazy to change the numbers. <laughs> 21 times 4 is 84. 21 plus 4 is 25. It's not 31. So this part, this beginning part, is the same as the factoring by grouping. So 28 times 3 is 84. 28 plus 3 is 31. Did I say that correctly? 28 times 3 is 84. 28 plus 3 is 31. Now, this is where it's different, right? In the last one, we would just split the 31 to x as 28 and 3. We're not doing that here. Lizzie method is a little bit different, okay? So what we're going to do is, well, I'll just show you what we did. All right. So the 28 is the numerator of a fraction, and the 3 is a numerator of a fraction. And keep these signs the same as the sign. So if this were a negative 28, we put minus 28 over 7. Now, the denominator is the leading coefficient, okay? The denominator is leading coefficient. Now, one of the biggest points of Lizzie method is if you can reduce the fraction, you must reduce this fraction. If you don't reduce it, it screws it up, okay? So the three sevens can't be reduced, but 28 over seven can be reduced, so it must be reduced. Now, something else is gonna happen, and I'll just show you when I look at the next part. So 28 over seven is four, but notice what happened to this fraction here. That seven popped up. It comes forward, okay? So it, this is now a normal factored answer, okay? This is not considered a normal factored answer. This is more like scratch work, okay? Now, however, if we're, all we're doing is solving for x, this is perfectly all right to use to solve with. However, we are going to be in many situations where we're not solving, where we're only factoring. So you must know how to get this step, okay? All right, so, but go ahead and solve it. Set each factor equal to zero, and you get x equals negative four, x equals negative three, seven. At least I didn't make a mistake that time. All right, now, what I want you to notice is that if you just set this factor equal to zero, you would have gotten this answer. Set this factor equal to zero, you got that answer, okay? So if you're solving, it is perfectly okay to do this. However, I need you to get in the habit of making factors because we will not always be just solving. There's going to be lots of times where we're factoring and only factoring, okay? All right, moving on. Next example. So this is the same kind of thing. Move the 42 to the left. 
Here's the 21, it goes in, up way up there. Take the 42, take it over there. Multiply the two numbers together, get 882. Take the negative six, seven, put it down there, yada, yada, yada. What are the factors of 882 that combine to make negative six and seven? So remember, it's the same as the last time with the factoring by grouping, right? Uh, there we go, negative 18 times negative 49 is 882. Negative 18 plus negative 49 is negative 67. I hope that's right, because I don't think I proofread, but we can pretend it's right if it's wrong. All right, so again, so if it's a negative sign, so it's negative 18 over 21, 21 is the leading coefficient, negative 49 over 21, 21, the leading coefficient, you must take this and reduce it, right? If, you, if, you're, if you're lousy at reducing, this is not a method for you, okay? So 18 over 21, there's a common factor of what, three? Set 49 over 21, there's a common factor of seven, so reduce that. Okay, so that's six sevens. 18 divided by three is six. 21 divided by three is seven. <sighs> you can do the reduce thing. Now, rewrite this in the proper form, meaning that don't write it with fractions. The denominator comes up, so there's a seven X minus six. The denominator comes up, three X minus seven. Don't ask me why that works that way, because it's a Lizzie method. I didn't come up with it, and it's not in any math books. All right, set each factor equal to zero, and you get your answers. Okay, no weird mistakes there. All right. I think that's it for the Lizzie method. Okay, uh, if, if those two methods were enough for you, you can stop the video, turn it off, or you can try trial and error. Trial and error is the least popular. It's only popular with students who don't use calculators, okay? Because, um, what is it? Uh, they have, you would have to have really good number sense to use this method. Okay, so here we go. So it's the same problem, okay? But this time, I'm not gonna do that. There's no green X this time, right? Because all you're going to do is split it up and you're just going to try. It's called trial and error because you just try, see if it works. If it doesn't work, try again. So here, you remember from the exercise on Tuesday where you were practicing multiplying. So here, you're going to multiply a lot. But 7x squared comes from 7x times x. So there's not much choice there. 12 is 4 times 3. Or it could be something else, 2 times 6, 1 times 12. All right? And then here's what you're going to do. So you know where these numbers come from. Four and three comes from the 12. Seven X and X comes from the seven X squared. What you don't know is whether this combination will give you the 31 X. So what you're gonna do, check the middle, check the oi of foil, right? This is the I part, the in, in between, or what is it, inner? I don't know. All right, so that's gonna be four X and check the outside, seven X times three, that's 21 X. And you add them together and you get 25 and you go, oh, that's not 31. So that's my trial and error, because that doesn't work. So I erase all that and then try another combination. Okay, uh, is that a different one? I guess it is. Three times X is three X. Seven X times four is 28 X. You combine them and there's 31, 31 X. Okay, so that was the goal. Make sure you're choosing these numbers that fit this, right? Three times four is 12. Seven X times X is seven X squared. As long as you're choosing them correctly, you can just kind of try and try again until you get it right. All right. So after that, it's normal. You just set each factor equals zero and solve. Okay. Let's try this one. You know what this was. So 21x squared. Now, when there are more than one choice, that's when it gets more difficult. Okay. So here, 21x squared is 7x and 7x times 3x. 42 is 3 times 14. That's a lousy choice, but let's try. Okay. So try the middle. 3 times 3 is 9x. 7x times 14x is big. That's too big. So you know that's way too big to get to negative 67. So you can just quit there, but I'll go ahead and multiply it. I mean, add it through for completeness. But you know that that's not anywhere near negative 67. So I need a negative anyways. So these positives didn't work. So let's just switch the signs. Erase all that and then try something else. Now, what I want you to notice here there's a common factor of three here and common factor of seven here. Did the original problem have a common factor? No. If the original problem did not have a common factor, then these won't either. Okay, so here three goes into 21 and 42, but it doesn't go into 67. So there's not gonna be a common factor of three. Uh, there's a common factor of seven in 21 and 42, but it doesn't go into 67. So it's Seven should not be a common factor in the factors. So I'm gonna reject this right off the bat. I'm not even gonna test it, 
okay? Because these have common factors that the original one do not. So we'll take it out. All right, try this combination. All right, here we go. Oh, well, negative 6 times 3 is negative 18. Negative 7 times, or positive 7 times negative 7, negative 49. Add those two, and you get negative 6, 7. That's our choice. Yay! And here we go, set each. So, so that's our correct combination of factors. And set each factor equal to zero, solve, and that's it. And that's the end of the video. Okay, so this video is about how to factor and solve trinomials when the leading coefficient is not one. There are three different techniques. You only require to know one, okay? There's nothing special about any of these techniques. Uh, this is the one I learned algebra in. But anyway, that's enough. This has been a long video. Sorry, but these are more complicated techniques. And you didn't need to watch the whole thing. Okay, bye-bye. Good night.